Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can uh, design a parametric facade with a series of point attractors and uh, make this pattern on the facade easily uh, by using also graph mappers. As you can see here, I can change the pattern. Uh, I can also use a Bezier distribution to change the pattern and we can also combine that and as you can see here this is going to be the minimum scale we can increase that and decrease it so the scale is going to be bigger at the point attractors uh, so this tutorial is going to help you to just design a really fast uh, pattern on a rectangle uh, what I have used in Rhino is just a simple rectangle uh, geometry as you can see here if I just make a copy this is the rectangle I'm using in the uh, project and we can easily change it to get better results. Uh, so let's get started from scratch and take a look at the algorithm. Uh, okay, let me turn off everything and explain this step by step. First, what I have done here is imported a rectangle and then I have converted that into a surface and used the isotrim uh, to divide it into number of UV counts. We always use a surface uh, isotrim divide domain which uh, when we wanted to divide a simple NURBS surface into a number of counts in the U and V divisions. Uh, okay, uh, after we have divided this, uh, the most important part is the pattern. Before I explain this, uh, let me uh, scale it with a simple number slider. So for example, assume that we have this border and we want to scale that so we can say uh, transform scale. Uh, the center of scale is going to be the center of these uh, curves so I can use uh, either a surface area uh, or a curve uh, polygon center because it's a polygon you can also use that and it's going to also give you the same results then I can uh, give it a factor between 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 because I don't want to reach the borders uh, anyway you can see that I can scale that easily with a number slider and we can also increase the number of the digits to get better results or just a smoother result uh, okay the pattern is really easy and what we want to do here is assume that we have these two set of groups, the borders, the scaled pattern. And uh, now I can go to the curve and instead of using an explode, I usually try to use a discontinuity because it's going to give you the four corners. Instead, if you use an explode, uh, you can see that the vertices are five and that is because it's going to count that it's like well, one uh, two three four and then it's going to go back to the last part so it's going to give you five points which we don't need but this continuous is going to give you exactly the number of points you need here which is four uh, okay i'm going to also give it to the scaled rectangle and now what i want to do here is to draw a rectangle uh, assume that this is the zero vertices and one two and three and then we will also have a zero here one uh, two and three okay and what we want to do is to make a rectangle and assume that I shift the numbers so the zero is going to come here okay and if I just uh, draw a rectangle from here to here uh, with the same plane as the plane of the panels we're going to get that pattern which you can see uh, something like this okay so the pattern is really easy to make you just have to shift the points so we can say shift list shift the inner part or the outer part doesn't really matter and then we can go to the curve primitive and use this rectangle two point uh, the point A and point B is important, so I'm going to give it to point A and point B. And the plane is also, uh, the default is XY, that's why it's drawing it on the ground. So what we want to do is to give the plane of the uh, rectangle we had at the first. So I'm going to go to the params menu and connect a plane to it. And it's going to extract the plane of the rectangle and give that to the plane. And now you can see that the rectangles are going to emerge. It's really easy. As you can see here, I can scale them. And they are also uh, nicely distributed into groups of four. If I simplify that, uh, you can see that you have them uh, all in a group of four, which you can use further in your project. Okay, now that you have understood the 
uh, rectangular two-point uh, logic, let me explain how we can introduce a point attractor to it. So what you have to do here is to, uh, let me just turn this off. And here uh, we have a point attractor by using a value at surface. You can give it to the surface, reparameterize it to make it between zero and one. And you can see that this is the first point attractor and this is the second one. So uh, we want to analyze this point attractor uh, according to these uh, curves. Let me just show you here. Uh, at the borders, uh, what we have have we have here is the center of these borders. So uh, what we will do here is assume that this is the point attractor one and point attractor two. Uh, the point attractors are going to go to the cloud input of closest point. Uh, remember, this is not closest points; uh, it's closest point because. Uh, we just want one output. So uh, what it's going to do here is that the center of the rectangles, assume this one, uh, is going to be searching in the cloud, which is going to be the point attractors. So here uh, it's going to uh, search for two point attractors and it's going to give the nearest one as an output of distance. That is the logic of closest point. Uh, another one, so for example, this one is going to find a distance between this point attractor and this point attractor and obviously it's going to give you the smallest uh, the shortest part uh, as an output for the distance so that is really uh, a great tool if you want to see the results let me show you with a line and give uh, one of the uh, centers uh, one of the points of the line on the centroids and one for the closest point and now you can see how easy it is it's going to find and snap to the nearest uh, point attractor so you just have to use this uh, closest point and then you have the distance uh, obviously this distance uh, number these distance numbers are not really uh, ready for scaling because we don't want to scale it 133 so what you have to do is scale this number uh, between a range of maybe 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 uh, which is going to give you a good result so we have to scale them down uh, you can use this uh, math domain remap numbers give the value to the value input it's going to also use a bound uh, because it's going to say uh, all of those distance has a bound of let me show you here it's 24 to 150 so this is the uh, source domain and this is the target domain so we're going to use this bound to find the source domain we give it to the s and then you can, uh, for the target domain, the default is between zero to one, okay? As you can see here. And the reason we are using this is because we want to combine it with a graph mapper, which is really cool. You can uh, give uh, more uh, visual effects to that. Let me also increase the number of parts here and also turn on these and turn off the centers, okay? So what it does is that the number that which has been scaled between zero and one, it's going to change the distribution. So for example, assume that because by the default, the graph mapper is between zero and one, uh, it's going to put the numbers on this axis and then project it on to the graph and then give me a new output. So that is changing the distribution with different graphs you want. And then we can say, okay, uh, scale these numbers back with the source domain of 0 and 1 because it's between 0 and 1 to a new target domain which is going to be the minimum and maximum scale uh, we want here and then we can give that to the scale which I explained before which was the center uh, of the pattern and then uh, the discontinuity rectangle plane and the surfaces and some visualization uh, I also made this into a building so if you want to have uh, more visualization or if I go to the rendered mode uh, you can see that I have uh, used the rectangle we had here uh, to move it back uh, based on the normal direction of the rectangle which we can control here just give it a minus x because I wanted to go backwards and then I have made a surface from it which is going to be the back of the building and also extruded the uh, complete rectangle to get this surface, let me show you here, it's just for uh, visualization purposes. So you just get that. You also 
uh, put the back surface to it and join them together with a join and then I've used a custom preview and a brep edge to visualize it even better and now you can see that I have the building and that's it uh, I hope this tutorial was useful if you have any questions just ask below this lesson and see you next time bye